Today, I'm going to show you some of the coolest AI features that I've seen for working with databases this far, and it completely changes the game, especially for agentic development. So definitely stick around as I explain how it works, how to set it up for yourself, and how you can start using it right away. Now, what I'm talking about here is called agentic Postgres, which comes from Tiger Data, who I teamed up with for this video. Now, that said, you can play around with this completely for free, and it's genuinely one of the coolest things that I've seen, hence why I'm making the video. Now, essentially the way that this works is you have kind of three main features or AI features built directly into a Postgres database, which is what most of us are using for production databases anyways. Now, the first, which in my opinion is the coolest, is instant forks. So a lot of times when you're writing code, you want to be able to make a safe copy of your database that you can work with, mess with without messing up the production database or even making changes to maybe a development environment if you have a lot of mock data there. So this allows you to instantly fork the entire database. You can fork literally one terabyte in under two seconds and then allow your agent to start writing code and messing with that database so you can test any changes safely before you apply them to something like production. Now, as well as that, it has vector search built in. It's actually a kind of a Postgres search, but it's essentially the same thing as vector search. And then it also has the ability to connect to it from an MCP server. So if you want to generate, you know, thousands of rows of sample data or perform, you know, different schema operations or look into the database using your agent, you can do that. I think it's going to be better if I show you a demo. So let me hop over to the computer and show you that. Then I'm going to explain how you can set this up and start playing with it for yourself. So I'm just on the computer here and I've got a really simple Python application open as a demo. It's just a blog application. You can sign in, you can sign out, you know, you can create users, you can add comments to posts, you can like them, you know, delete them, etc. You get the idea, okay? Now this is connected to a Postgres AI enabled database that's hosted by Tiger Data. And I want to show you that I'm inside of cursor here. I've connected to the Tiger MCP server. And simply by doing that, I now have the ability to directly modify my data database using my agent inside of cursor via the MCP server. So I can do something simple like, you know, give me a summary, if we can spell this correctly, of the, you know, database tables in my, I don't know, app or in my database using the MCP tools. Okay. Now, when I do that, this should indicate to the agent that it should call the available tools. So it's going to go through the planning here. It sees it has access to these various tools and that it's going to start calling them. So you can see here that it's now running all of these different database operations. It's running various queries and essentially getting the summary for me where it tells me, okay, here are the tables you have. You have four tables, you have a user table, post table, comment table, and then like table. And it's giving me kind of that summary with the various different relationships that I have. Now, just to show you that that is indeed true, if I go here to Tiger and I have a look here, you can see I can go to the Explorer and inside of here, you'll see that I do have those four tables. Okay, so that's cool, but that's not revolutionary. I mean, we've had MCP servers before, but what's interesting is that I can get the model here to create a fork of this database for me, which I could then change to and connect to and start testing all of the new features that I want without changing, breaking, or modifying my original database. So what I can do is say, okay, you know, four this database using MCP tools and give me the new connection details. Okay, so that's going to take a second. It's just going to figure out the correct tools to call. The fork itself only takes about two seconds. And what we can do is while that runs, let's open up the website here. Let's go back to our services. Let's just refresh a few times. And we should see in a second that this fork appears as a new service. So let's wait for this to refresh. And you can see that the database fork just appears. So if we click into the fork here, we can go to the Explorer and we can see that it has the same table, table sorry, and ultimately the same data as our original database. And then if we come back here into cursor, it gives me the new information. Obviously I'll delete these databases afterwards. So you can't steal my data and I can connect to this and now have my agent start using this database to make various changes, test the schema, test the indexes, etc. So the reason why this is pretty impactful is because now all of my agents I'm running multiple of them in parallel, for example, can fork the database, start working on their new features without messing up the data or needing to create new sample data or anything along those lines. They can test within this fork where it's safe and we're not going to touch the original data. And then as soon as everything is good and it's tested, we can go back, we can make the changes to the original database and then we're good to go. 
So I think this is super cool. And all of this stuff, like I said, is free to play around with. It's pretty much brand new. So if you go to the link in the description, you can get a free trial. You can create a version of this database. And now what I'm going to show you is exactly how to do that, how to connect the MCP server and kind of give you a quick tutorial so you can set this up in your own development environment. And then I'll show you a more advanced example where we give this kind of a complex prompt and show you how it can take advantage of these tools. So I just closed the application. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete these services because I want to start completely from scratch. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can set this up. And again, walk you through a tutorial. It won't take that long. All right, so now that we've got this done, you know, we should be brought to some kind of page that looks like this once we create an account on Tiger Data. From here, you're in kind of like the Tiger Cloud. So from here, I'm gonna go to new service. As you see, I'm on this page. I'm able to go to free. I can just set up the free service that's available here. I'm gonna go ahead and press on create service. Could give that a name if I want, but for now, that's totally fine. And then it's gonna give me the information to connect to my database. Now we're just gonna wait for it to be deployed. So the service is ready here, and it's gonna give you the information to download the database config, as well as an environment variable file. And you can use this in any programming language that you want, right? It gives you the connection string, and you can simply just plug in these values, and you now have a Postgres SQL database that you can use. Again, in this case, it's free. So what I'm going to do is just grab some of these values and put them in my dot environment variable file. You don't have to do that. We're going to set up the MCP server in a second, which will connect to this as well. But of course, you're usually going to want to use it in your actual application and then have it connected to the AI so you can do it you know, in both ways. So let me just fill in the ENV file and then I'll be right back. OK, so I've got my environment variable file filled in here. And what I'm going to do now is just press on skip this step because I've already gone through that. And you're going to see that it gives me a few options here in terms of connecting my database. Now, there's various different libraries out of the box that you can use to connect to this. For example, you know, it has Python, Ruby, JavaScript, etc. In our case, what we want to go to for right now is connecting this via an AI tool because I want to show you those AI features. This is going to allow us to connect an MCP server. So let's do that. There's a few different options here. First thing what we need to do is we need to get the Tiger CLI tool on our computer. Once we have the Tiger CLI tool, then it's very easy to install the MCP server. We just run Tiger MCP install, and then we can pick like Claude code or warp or cursor, whatever we want to install it into, and it will automatically do that for us. So you're going to notice that it gives us a few options here. We have the homebrew command, we have the go command, and I'm going to suggest that if you're on Windows, you use the go command, whereas if you're on any like Ubuntu or like Linux or Mac distribution, any of these should work fine for you because you'll have these commands that like work in your terminal. So I'm going to go to go. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go into a new terminal here and I'm just going to paste this command. Now you do need go installed on your system for this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter and it's going to install the CLI tool for me. OK, now that's installed for me. It was pretty fast because I already had it installed. I'm just showing you like that's how you run the command. And then the next thing we're going to do is just do the next command of the list, which is Tiger auth login. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. That's going to bring us to a page here. From here, it says Tiger data. We can go ahead and press on authorize. And then that's going to sign us in in the CLI. So we can close this window and we can also go back here and just look for the next command. So the next command is going to be defining a variable and then saying tiger db save password. And we're just saving this password for this particular instance. So again, we're going to go ahead and copy that so we can have the connection to our database saved. OK, so we're going to go here and then we're going to paste that command. Now, if you are on Windows, you're going to notice this command doesn't work. At least it doesn't work inside of PowerShell. So we just need to adjust this slightly. Now, what I do is I just ask the agent, you know, what is the correct command on Windows, you probably want to omit putting your password here so you don't pass that directly over to you know whoever's running these models. But that's OK. We're going to run this and it's going to tell me what the Windows version of the command is, because in this case, it's showing it for Mac and for Linux. And then we can just copy it in here. So let's have a look at what the command is. It says we can use this kind of, you know, ENV prefix. So dollar sign ENV colon, then a what is it? Semicolon. And then we can write the command. So let's paste this in now. OK, and let's go back and just change the things. We're going to add our semicolon and then we're going to go here and we're going to say dollar sign ENV colon. So now we've set this up to work in PowerShell. Again, if you're on Mac or Linux, you could just copy it in. It should work. And when I press enter, you can see that it saved the uh, password successfully for this service. OK, now that we've got that, the next command is telling us to run is Tiger MCP install. So let's go ahead and run that command from our terminal. And it's going to give us a bunch of options, right? Codex, Cursor, Gemini, VS Code, Windsurf, etc. So let's go to Cursor because that's what I'm using and just press Enter. Now it's told me that, okay, it's you know added this to Cursor and you just need to restart it and then you're good to go. 
So let me reload cursor and let's check the MCP configuration. All right, so we got cursor back up. Now, if we wanna test if the MCP server is working, we just need to get into our settings. There's a few ways to do that. The way that I like to do it is hitting Control Shift P or Command Shift P on your keyboard. You can then type cursor settings. From there, you can press enter and it's gonna show you the various cursor settings. So from here, we can go to tools and MCP. And then we'll notice that the tiger tools have been added. I deleted it, then I re-added it by running that command so we can test it here. And you'll notice these are all of the services and the tools and kind of some descriptions on how they work. So now that we're connected to that, we can simply start typing in the chat and asking our agent to do something. So we can say what MCP tools, okay, for our database do you have access to or something like that. And it should be able to find these various tools and give us a list of them. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so clearly that worked, right? It gave us a list of all of the tools. So now that we're connected, we really can just go crazy and kind of do anything that we want. So the first thing I typically like to do with my databases is we'll create them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run my Python application. So I'm just gonna run UV run and then app.py just so that I create the database tables and it kind of populates that in the database for me. And then once that's created, I'm gonna ask the MCP server here, or I guess the agent, to go and add a bunch of sample data for me to this database. So I'm just gonna do a prompt like this, add a bunch of sample data to this database. I want fake users, fake comments, fake posts, and fake amounts of likes. Let's go with 200 or 300 fake entries, use the MCP tools, do not write any code, just use the MCP tools to add this data. Okay, so I'm just doing that with a tool called Whisper Flow there. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And now because the MCP server is connected, I'm asking it to okay, go make a bunch of sample data for me so that I can kind of you know test my application. So let's wait for that to finish. We'll come right back and we'll test to see if that data exists. Okay, so for some reason it was telling me, hey, like the app's not using Postgres, it's using SQLite, which is wrong. So I just told it, yeah, like we're using Postgres already, so don't worry. And now it's running the various commands and it's gonna create all of that data. So just as an example, if I kind of run my application right now, we can go here and kind of just refresh and have a look at it. It should sign us out because we shouldn't have any user right now. So let's wait and you can see it kind of signs us out. We could make a new account. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, and I just made a new account and signed in and you can see there's no post right now. So what we want to test essentially is once we run all of these commands, do we get some fake posts? Do we get some fake users? You know, is this actually working? Again, we'll wait, we'll go back and we'll see if a bunch of fake data exists. All right, so this has told me that it's created a bunch of fake data. And if I come here and I just refresh before this, you can see we have all of this information, right? And we have these fake users. We have like fake comments on the posts, you know, looks pretty good, right? So I was able to do that. So that's pretty cool. Now where this gets cooler is when we start doing the fork, right? So that was a pretty simple thing. Like we wanna add a bunch of fake data. But now what I wanna do is I wanna preserve this fake data but I wanna create a fork of this database with all of the same information so I can test a new, more advanced feature. So what I'm gonna do is just open up a new agent window here. And I've got this long prompt that I'm just gonna copy in from my other screen. And I'll kind of briefly explain to you what it's saying. Essentially what I wanna do is create a new feature for this application. Now, by having access to this MCP server, again, it makes it a lot more useful, where what I'm able to do is fork the database. And then I'm telling it, I wanna add this admin user functionality where essentially there's a way to create an admin user and this user can delete data, review data, edit data, et cetera, from an admin panel. Now that would make it important obviously for me to make sure I don't mess this up if I'm deleting a bunch of data when testing this feature, hence why I want the fork to occur. So I'm just gonna run this. We're gonna see what the agent can do. Hopefully it will successfully fork the database. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the new forked credentials inside of this fork env file. And I'm just gonna change one of the values in my config right here to load this new fork environment variable. So I'm able to test the forked database. And then if the fork database works well, then again, we can apply the change to the real database, right? That's how I'm gonna do it. All right, so this took a few minutes here. It did complete. It also gave me some readme files explaining kind of how to use this. So for example, I had to create this fork env file. Let me have a look at it right here with the new information like of the fork database. Then I had to promote one of the existing users to admin. So I just did that here, promoting tech with Tim to admin. And now if I go back here, we'll see we have admin panel. If I click into the admin panel, you can see we have users, posts, comments, and likes. Let's go maybe manage users or something. And let's have a look here. And I think it's gonna be a little bit slow because I haven't optimized any of the queries, but we should be able to see a list of users and modify them. 
Okay, and then here we go. We can see all of the different users popping up. I can click through them. And then the cool thing is, right, I could test deleting all of these users. And that's not going to impact the first database that I had. It's just impacting the fork. And then assuming all of this works, then I can just commit these changes, go back to the original database, run the migration on that original database, and we're good to go, right? So that's really the whole point of doing this and makes this agentic flow really, really cool. I also, as I was mentioning, can run multiple agents in parallel so I could open up another agent here, right? And have it do a task with a different fork database and we can continue doing that on and on and on and really get much more productivity, again, safely without messing up the original database. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys in this video. I think this is super cool. This is something I'm going to use in all of my workflows now because it just makes a ton of sense. And even just the MCP server alone, I find rare, really useful for creating fake data, spinning up the database, you know, dropping tables, whatever, doing queries, asking information. I think it just makes it a lot simpler than having to get into, you know, a management tool like, you know, a PG admin or something and do everything manually there. Anyways, guys, that's all I had for you in this video. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below, and I will see you in another one.